Um, Let's go around and just say while while Julia is looking on the discussion forums and and uh, and the uh, Twitter feed, let's go around to everybody else and say very briefly. This is real brief. This is like a almost a yes or no. Uh, what the what's the result of the work? That kind of work that Susan just described. That iterative relationship work with a poem or a poet that then produces this. Um, what I was describing a few minutes ago as a kind of democratic result or a collaborative result. So what comes from it? It could be simply what you get out of it personally. So Dave, quickly, what, what's the result? What's, why do it? It just makes you more sensitive to the way we use language everywhere, uh, which is important. You, you bring a new perspective to communication with the world. Great. Emily? Yeah, and if you see that language as the medium of, of everything, of how we express ourselves, of how we broker all sorts of interpersonal relationships, and that sensitivity to language just makes us more sensitive people, more capable of connecting with poems and with each other. Did you say broker? I did. So do you think that, I mean, I like it, uh, do you think that we broker a relationship with these poems? We it do. It gives us a lot of agency. Yes, I'd say we do. Cool, Max. Yeah, it it we come to realize how social language is and how questions of of society and and collective action and people together is fundamentally tied up in questions of of language and meaning, and there's no way to really separate them. So it's, I mean, you can look at any power structure is already encoded in the language we use. Nicely put, Jason. Uh, briefly, what do we get from the work? I'll read from a. Uh, Post from Jerry Whaley. Jerry Whaley, he did some good things in the discussion forums. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, and keep going, Jerry. Um, you just said, in, in reference to Emily Dickinson, the poet is like a sphere with her center everywhere and his circumference nowhere, which I thought was pretty lovely and is what a poem gives to me as a reader it opens my boundaries and my attentions. And in a way, what was really exciting about Jerry's comment is how it made me re-look at Whitman in a, in a new way. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Jerry, if we were giving A's, and we aren't, you'd get one there. That was great. I just thought I'd throw that out there. We don't give A's. We don't give grades of any kind. Um, uh, Anna and Amaris. And then what I'd like to do, Lily, is answer the phone and then throw that person a curveball and have, yeah, and have Julia say something from the Twitter feed and have a little dialogue between the Twitter feed and this caller. Yeah, let's see what happens there. But Amaris, how are you? I'm good. What, um, what comes from this work, very quickly? I think for me, it's just being more sort of in t attentive and in touch with my own feelings and associations when I encounter something. Um, so in that way, it's just sort of an encouragement to remain open and playful. Great. Anna? I don't know. I guess for me, it's like, why, why not do the work? Um, because if you're just going to read it and scan it, like, what are you, what are you going to get? I mean, like, visceral reaction is great, but like, if you don't like dig a little bit deeper and engage that way yourself, that's cool. It's such a such an Anna approach, you know. Like, uh, wh why not do that instead of you know wasting your time cruising through Facebook or watching a bad TV show or or, or a good TV laundry. show for that matter? Because I mean, I think Anna's transformation into a Dickinsonian is complete. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> <laughs> 